<laughs> All right. Only fans. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you back. Man, I can't believe it's been one week. The last episode. <laughs> what episode number is this? This what is episode is number 11. Oh, Jesus. What's our letter for today, guys? The dreaded N. The N word. Anyways, I'm cut, Nick. Cut. <laughs> cut. <laughs> We're canceled. All right, I'll edit that out. Yes. All right, I'm Nick, and I have two other co hosts with Nick. me. Mm, motherfucker. Right, hey, introduce yourselves. I don't want to introduce you guys. Isn't that your job? No. Who are you the, paying you for? Yeah, oh my what? god. I'm John Nathan. I'm Carter Green. Or. Mr. Blister. Not my nope, name. you're not. <laughs> Mr. Blister. Anyways. It's not in your letterbox anymore. Right? Yes, it so, is. It is. Your name shows up as Carter Green. No one sees your username. Oh my god. For, for Shut for up real. about letterbox. Don't look. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you freaking This is liar. movies by the letter. No, I'm, don't, no I'm saying. Oh look. my fucking god. What's I'm saying don't on? look in the middle of the podcast. All right, why does my name show up? No, don't worry. I'll just check my You say your name is Carter Green. I gotta change that. This is God, terrible. Damn, already. I've been promoting myself as Mr. Blister this whole time. They can still find you. The They'll other. still find you as Mr. Blister. There's no other Mr. Blister. Also, no one's gonna find you. This is all getting cut. No one's gonna <laughs> no, find. No one's gonna find you in the episode. Anyways, right, speaking so of, and what were welcome to movies, movies by the letter this week. No, okay, we won't just talk I'm about, about the this one. Why? We've had much worse beginnings. No, Remember no. the E episode? Okay, can we just go? I'm getting really. I'm like about to leave. I'm about to walk out. All right. This continues. And if as this, an infomaniac. This behavior continues. Nick picked. I an warned you guys about. Oh this. my fucking! I picked God. the naked prey. I miss. I got the naked gun two and a half. The smell of fear. Something yes. like that. You got it exactly right. Did I really? Yeah. Yeah. Proud of that. Good job. Proud of that. Off the. Off the. Do you know who directed top. it? No. Oh, well, Wonder. I do. The Zucker bro. The Sucker Bros? Zuckerberg? The Zuckerberg <laughs> Brothers. Okay, what do you want to mean? The Zuck Bros. All right, I think we're going to start with Naked Prey, right, guys? Yeah. This is raw, unedited. Naked <laughs> Prey. Okay, what's what's it about? What's it about? Uh, about Naked it. Prey, directed by Cornell Wilde, I think is how you probably pronounce it. I don't know. The, the E is silent. Fitting for the I movie guess. it was. Wild. Uh, Naked Prey is about um, basically a group of ivory hunters uh, exploring the African desert. Uh, I don't know, is it the Sahara or what? Some desert in Savannah. Africa. Savannah or whatever. I don't think it's a desert. It's like a... Like a savanna. Yeah, okay, like The sure. African savanna. Desert, savanna. No, they're totally different potatoes, biomes. Potatoes, potatoes. You know what no, I'm saying, Nick? They're literally different biomes. But a, a desert-esque biome with lots of life. Lots of, yeah, lots of a savanna, if you will. Oh they really, they really found, they really use, utilize. And what them. happens Anyways, in this movie? Uh, it's yeah, it's a group of ivory hunters. Uh, How many get captured? <laughs> I don't know. What are their names? No, what are no, all their names? Uh, they get captured by a cannibalistic uh, tribe of Africans, and they are all murdered uh, brutally. All of them. Except for one man in particular, uh, the naked prey, if you will. I'm naked. Um, remember, this was released Who's in Who's the real naked prey in this movie? Though? Yes. Uh, anyways. Interesting uh, question to be posed. Basically because he seems to be the only one who isn't, like, constantly anti these Africans. They kind of let him go on a sort of sick game. He's still cool. Yes, I, I was gonna mention that he still is an ivory hunter, so still. And, the, and he has like moral almost slaves following him. Yes, uh, we'll yes. talk about that. He's, he's, a, he's friend. A, what are you about? We'll we'll talk about that later. Either way, this guy is the only one who kinds of who co tries to be diplomatic with these slaves. So, they, <laughs> diplomatic with these slaves. He, he does with these slaves. Not, slaves. With these slaves. They're just a oh, tribe. Oh yeah, the Africans. <laughs> no. All right, I'll God. cut that out. <laughs> You were just talking about slaves. No, it's fine. It was a slip of the tongue. Yeah, come nothing on. more, nothing more. Freudian else. slip. Or should I not call it that? Don't call it a Freudian <laughs> slip. <laughs> oh, boy. Right. Garbage fire. All right, this is all Most cut out. This episode all right, bad. so the Naked Prey is about a group of yes, ivory hunters. Said that. <laughs> no, the rest is getting cut out. <laughs> no, it's not. All right, fine. You know what? I'm keeping it all in. 
So they let him go on a sort of sick game where they're going to hunt him down after they give him a few minutes head start. And he basically has to battle for survival against these hunters who are trying to kill him. Uh, in addition, he's battling against nature and the uh, exotic animals of the savannah. Stock, stock food. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> we'll mention that too. Uh, Battling against stock footage. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's really simple. It's basically just um, a man being hunted. It's a man versus man, man versus nature-esque thing. Man versus wild. What did you guys think of The Naked Prey? Yeah, I'll go for it. A uh, bad movie. Thought it was a bad movie. Really? I did not like Nick, it. what did Really you didn't think? like it at all. I thought it was okay. I thought it was fun. Like, I actually had fun watching this movie. I had zero fun watching this I actually movie. thought it was really good. I'm really Whoa, surprised Whoa, this is this. not what I expected I really at all. Did not I did like, think it was really good. I really did not like this movie at all. I got, I'm more on Carter's side. It was really good. Because I thought it was just, a, like, fun, like, constantly kept the pace up. I didn't up. think I it, was it was fun at all. I thought it was real fun. boring. I didn't think it was fun at all. I and mean, I thought it was actually quite entertaining. But I think I in a sort of brutal way. Well, yeah, I don't mean, like... I was yucking it up while watching this movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the movie is very hard to watch. It's surprisingly like brutal and graphic for a 1965 film. There's surprisingly but, a lot of snake violence in this movie. Uh, the scene where the man is c cooked over that the one, fire. That one, I really that, like that. I thought that, that was one of the most brutal deaths I've seen in a movie. I really love yeah, that. That uh, that entire oh, scene God. of when they are abducted, abducted like that. by the cannibal, I thought was... Besides the questionable portrayal of race throughout this movie. <laughs> um, um, I took it... I Listen, it is... I guess it could be racist. I wouldn't say ra I would not, I don't know if I'd I call it racist. I just found it a very like questionable portrayal of race. Especially a movie made by I, like a white man. I think a, a I don't movie think... at this time period... Like, if... Shouldn't... This movie probably did bring negative... Like, m made people who already had this image of this is what Africans are... My thing is, a, like, them. a white man portraying, a, like, a native tribe of Africans as, like, cannibalistic and, like, yes. often stupid. I found it to be kind of, like, to, like, I found no, I it, like, them as I didn't take them as stupid at all. I think, at all. I think they, they were, like, expert tractor, trackers. I think there were, sometimes they were portrayed as smart and sometimes they were portrayed as, like, kind of dumb. I think everyone I, has dumb I think everyone is portrayed as that, though, because the white guy has really dumb moments, The too. white guy in the beginning was, like, unbelievably dumb. Like, yeah. The point was annoying. I, I just took it as more like these cannibalistic Africans are are another element of nature that he has to fight against. Yeah. I, his hunt I think, like, putting all, like, whatever questions of race aside, I thought it was kind of, I found it to be kind of really, like, amateurly made. And just oh, I didn't think that at all. Unreadable. I think it's beautifully I think, shot. Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely okay, think gorgeous the, to look when at. When they take... However, the okay, stock footage of they do that they and they animals, go into stock footage of animals i think it's like you're out in this i don't think it was stock footage i think it was like B no no it was it was i think there they was had to use a different camera to catch yeah like, i think it was B and it like really took out of it because i think animals. they could have i don't i think it was stock footage i think it was I really footage. i don't think that. i don't think like, it was they, stock. i think they just sent i think it was out, stock footage. i think you they, think they had this kind of stock footage in the 60s yeah, what, yes where would they go what archive would they go to i really that's what it if it wasn't it's what it seemed like if it wasn't, it would just be a different crew went out and was like... The camera design. style didn't even... The camera, the way it looked didn't even match the rest that's of the movie. That's why I'm saying it was B-roll footage. It just it's, seemed, it, it it seemed like stock footage to me. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. It, it, I didn't it like was it. a different crew making the footage because it was more dangerous and harder to capture. Because they were actually were having animals fight each other. Not they were sure. actually killing animals. I don't know if I... I'd like to look into that, but it's not how I saw it. Well, it's the same difference. But, it took me yeah. out of the movie, too. It besides, definitely took me out, too. Besides that, I, like, I was kind of watching, like, a Net Geo. I, absolutely gorgeous to look yeah. at. I think, yeah, I think it, that I did like how it looked, like, when it wasn't that. I I just didn't find myself enjoying this movie at all. I thought it was really kind of boring. I was really bored all throughout. I, uh, I thought the action was all kind of blah. Like, it was, really? none of it was... I thought it was, like, I thought some, I had pretty, a surprising you think the acting, punch. Do you think the acting... Oh, I thought you said action. No, the acting around like oh, oh no, the, that scene the acting was, was terrible. the main problem with this movie. Like, and that took that made the action scenes not fun for me. Like a guy would get stabbed. And be like, for me, I found like, the action to have like a surprising punch 
I, it seemed really, very it's, old mm, it seemed really to fake. Me. I'm in it the seemed, middle where it was hit or miss for me. It seemed like, really fake to me. It like, really took me out of the movie when the guy was pushed in the pricker bush and was like, oh god. Yeah, they're just. It just it seemed like it, I mean, the gun, the gunshots seemed looked like little like pebbles being dropped in the water, like it, none of the action really worked for me at all. Maybe because I was ex- I I wouldn't have expected it to be as brutal as it was for. Uh, movie from 1965 and maybe that's why i enjoyed the action but i just i found myself consistently being like jesus like that was like harsh like that was i, a, I like how, that I, was a kill that actually like, made me like jump or uh, made, affected me i think the scene that works best is when he kills the two people like back to back and there's like almost like a really well choreographed uh like hand-to-hand combat fight I thought the scene that worked best for me was when they first got trapped. Me too. Captured yeah, that, by the, I like. I was the, talking about action was, scenes. Obviously, that scene. Works him for that. being it was roasted. Horrifying. Him being ro- yeah, yeah that, was, at that point, like I was then, in the movie. I like. It was like the movie Campbell Hall across the Green Inferno. The, the but it was complete, done really well. Uh, yeah, except beautifully shot. Yeah, and, like giant landscapes like of all these African people. It was. It was that incredible. I, I was in it at that point, and then like. And like the him running degradation of these people. Who are like being stripped and cooked alive? It was it fun was, to watch because it was there were poachers. So hard to watch, and that's also like I didn't want to root for the hard. main character at all. <laughs> like it was a main character I couldn't root for at all. I I was kind of on his side. He him. he's still a poacher, like a co- yeah. Col- he's he's like a colonist <laughs> or colonial he is a, poacher. He is a poacher. Like he's there's a poacher, no, I did like, not want to root for him whatsoever. <laughs> he didn't shoot as many elephants as that guy. And he only shot for ivory. They made that clear. He's still Listen, we can colonial. I don't. I wasn't really on his side either. I, was I, not, I wanted him to die. I like. I wanted I, him to I was never there. Tell him when he met that little boy. You were a little like, oh, this is kind of cute. I was never, that I, was sweet. I, I like no, that. I actually that was my least favorite part of the what? Film. <laughs> what I, what I, I thought little that was boy a, okay. actor was so bad. It was bad. Huh? The acting in this movie was bad throughout. I thought. Uh, I think when they weren't talking, it was good. I look. That's. The, one of the main aspects I liked, I liked the, how the storytelling for the most part was non-vocal and they utilized lots of... I liked the music they utilized. It was very cool. I loved the music. And the music was played by great. real Africans. Cool. Yeah. I thought that was all really cool. But like, the chase itself, like I just... Like in him surviving, I found to be kind of just bland for me. I was personally. really um, on my, the edge of my seat for most of it. And I really like movies where it's kind of like one man has to f- figure his way out of a shitty situation or one man has to learn how to survive on his own in this terrible situation. I really love movies like that. I really like movies where it's like the hunter versus the hunted. So this is kind of right up my alley. I do have problems with uh, probably last 15 minutes of it. I like how the movie actually ends. But He's once like, he gets with the kid, I thought... Slowed down. At yeah. first, it, I thought it was very sweet when they were hiding when the other... When the two basically tribes were clashing with each other. Uh, I thought that was sweet, and then it kept going on, and I was like, okay, this kid sucks at acting. He's not a good actor either when it comes to talking. And I I immediately lost the chemistry between the two of them. And I was kind of like, this is just like too corny to be enjoyable, especially considering how I felt like the rest of the movie is like a really grainy sort of pseudo documentary style at times i guess i guess like i guess if i had to pin out of like a main issue i guess i just found like the main chase to be like a little bit re- repetitive for me at times and just it didn't it never really hooked I me guess I, could see that. I didn't find i didn't like if i had found the suspense you did i guess i would have enjoyed it more but i never really felt invested in the character or felt the suspense you know mm-hmm. so like with that missing this there wasn't much left in this movie and then like stuff like the I guess I, like, found the portrayal of race to be kind of, like, annoying to me. And then I found, like, what seemed... I guess maybe I'd like to look into it, but what seemed, like, kind of stock footage or B-roll. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to look into, like, a making way. footage. It took me it, like, out of the movie, too. It, like, felt, like, very out of place. Yeah, I but, agree. Especially when the rest of the movie looks so good. I agree. But the first, whatever, 15 minutes, like, it really, like, drew me in. You know, I guess I was just kind of disappointed that the rest of it seemed just a little repetitive. Well, yeah, the reason I picked this movie is because Gaspar Noé was like, it's the first cannibal movie ever. And There isn't much cannibals. And I, oh, that's, like what I, that's what I think of it for. And then I, I'm watching it and I'm like, eh, there's not much cannibalism at all in this movie. But when they first got abducted 
abducted by the tribe, I was like, holy shit, that, this movie goes hard that for him, 1965. The scene of him being roasted is one of the like most brutal things that I've ever seen in the movie. Because they had Agreed. completely like covered in clay or whatever it was. Yeah, and and then like everything. only like a mouthful. So he had to be like ro- literally roasted alive. Like it's one of the most brutal things I've seen. And like even like they're like forcing that one guy to eat poop or something. Like Yeah. It was like all really brutal and I like liked that stuff. But then like Weird. It kind of just sick evolved. Freeze. It involved. In, it evolved from that until it kind of just like a repetitive. Like, he runs from the guys. He kills one or two of them. He has to do some sort of survival thing. He runs again. When like, I, whenever there was a large group scene, I felt like they repeated sound effects a lot, which kind of took I, me I out of it. I kind of noticed. I that liked. A little. I thought like the like how they choreographed the like large group scenes is cool. You definitely burned down. I agree. Forest though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this whole movie was made in Africa. I, I would like I to see a making the dedication to they used all African music, all oh, African saying, music was probably <laughs> all African actors. I was about to say I appreciate the dedication. I think they, the, they burned down a forest. Uh, they, I think the music. It's very like they wanted to shoot this on location. Yeah, I appreciate African, that. I, I appreciate I like that dedication. their dedication to that because they easily could have shot this on a studio yeah. and it would have looked way worse and would have been. Way less believable. Would have been outdated. I think. I, yeah. yeah. I. I guess I just wish they would have been more nuanced about like the idea of poaching and like, like yeah. colonization. I think they could have said something interesting there. I can definitely see oh, this being problematic, but like, from a modern perspective. I especially. don't like. I'm not saying they have to say something interesting about it. Yeah, but when because they're presenting, it's such a small but, part of the movie. But what they're presenting themes of like poach, like they show the scenes of them shooting the elephant. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, they're gonna go somewhere with this. And I guess they did by killing most of them, but like, yeah. I don't know. Like. Yeah. Uh, main thing is uh, the last 15 minutes kind of blew it for me. And when they do talk, I think the acting is not That's why I liked the mu- I think my favorite part was like the music and the way it was like non-vocal story time. I think. I agree that with that. Uh, I had a question. Does he eat human meat at the end of this movie? I think. No, I th- you can see like the muskrat that they boy killed. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think it was human meat. Do you remember when he steals meat from the tribe? It was just like uh, animal meat, right? It seemed or, like yeah. animal meat, but, but then in my mind, I was like, "Cause is it supposed to be like? Is he like? Has he sunk that low that he needs to?" I eat think he was stealing meat? food. Yeah, because that seemed like more of a peaceful tribe. Yeah, yeah. And like another. That's why they the got attacked, attacked by the from, evil yeah. tribe. So I don't think it was human meat. I think that would have been interesting. I'm glad that they didn't present it. I would have had more problems with it if they presented it as, look at how horrific these tribes are and it was more like the tribes are just another element of the nature of this harsh yeah. environment yeah. that's how i took it so that's yeah, why i, I can see in, that interpretation i guess for, I was, for a 1965 movie it was honestly like more like less problematic than i would have expected it to be although i get what you're saying about the yeah i just think like like if it was made by like african-americans made like just like thinking about like who made it it just seems like a little bit like it just rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being too PC. No, I get what you're saying. <laughs> but that I wouldn't say that's my main issue from the movie. I think just like putting all of that aside, I found like the movie itself to be just kind of didn't catch me. Okay, are we doing scores? Yeah. All right, Nick. Six out of ten. I'm, I don't know. This one. John. I was. I think I was at a three, but I think. Four after talking about it, four. Boo! I'm at a seven out of ten. Wow, I was damn. at like a, 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 a eight until the last Surprising. like fifteen minutes. No, I really loved it until the probably last twenty fifteen I'm minutes, a- and then I kind of thought it got a little too corny, and I really didn't like the child acting very much. They did that thing where they put like clearly fake tears on someone's <laughs> face. Oh yeah, I remember that. It was terrible. <laughs> it's but funny. yeah, check it out if you're into like more like into like a chase. Yeah, movie. you like movies about man and man versus nature. Kind of gave me wild. Uh, like departed vibes a little bit because that movie also was a uh, kind of an exploitation y esque movie with a little more style and a little more artfulness than a typical exploitation movie. And it was that movie also had a real dedication to okay, we're gonna have it be all shot in real nature in the real backwoods with all the actors doing real stunts and. Like, that's why I respect... I mean, not The Departed. I meant Deliverance. Yeah. I was, I was really, really confused. I'm sorry. It's like Scorsese? 
No, <laughs> Scorsese. I, I thought that was a. <laughs> no, no, no. I meant Deliverance. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can see that. If I uh, could recommend. Do you get some... what I'm saying now? Yes, I, was I like, get what you're saying now. When I got backwards looks, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, <laughs> when, I got, when I got backwards, I get... when I got backwards looks, I was like, oh geez, like why? I, they must really not agree with me. But no, I, I meant the Deliverance. Sorry, I do that all. If I could do a recommendation, there's a short, like 10, 15 minute documentary called Our Trip to Africa on YouTube. Oh, that was very good. Very, yeah. very cool. Uh, I don't want to say much about it, but I'm it's, sorry. Does that start with the letter N? I was just it just it just it just reminded me of that, and I thought I'd call it out because I really we have really, a gimmick and we stick. It's a great short doc, but yeah. Yes, thank you for showing me that. You didn't show Very me. good. Sorry. You're welcome. <laughs> for me Our trip to Africa, Nick. Craig. All right, I'll watch well, it. I guess. Uh, not thank you because I didn't like it. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad I experienced it. Anyways, let's move on to the next movie. Okay. Um, John's next up. movie is The Naked Gun Two and a Half: The Smell of Fear. Um, this is a follow-up to the film, one of my favorite comedies. Very kind of guilty pleasure, sweet spot for The Naked Gun One. Um, I think it, I think it's one of like funniest movies I've seen. Have so, you seen Top Secret? No, but I want to watch that. I want to watch that. I want to watch Police. I want to watch Police Squad too. Top Secret is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. But before I got rudely interrupted, sorry, I just wanted to no, no, give a quick shout out to Top uh, Secret. So, this is the follow up to that movie. Uh, it's kind of a like CSI parody style movie. Um, so I, I guess if you want to talk like kind of basic plot, uh, there's an energy crisis and a man in a wheelchair is who's the head of it is replaced by a doppelganger and uh <laughs> yeah and then hijinks occur uh how did you guys like this movie i really liked this movie uh i think i laughed about just as much as the first naked gun quite honestly uh if i had to critique it I would say it does feel like some of the bits are recycled from the first one. It feels like they do repeat a few of the same jokes a few times in this movie. And I I wasn't as crazy about the naked gun as you were. I thought it was more hit or miss for me. But when it hits, it really hits and it really makes me laugh. And I felt the same way about this movie. And I wrote, like, even though I did feel like jokes were recycled or regurgitated... It made me laugh just as much as the first one, and I thought it had it stuck perfectly to the same tone as the first one. So that's where I'm at. I really like this movie. I I have a sweet spot for really dumb humor, so this this stuff it really hits with me. I really like the first Naked Gun, and I'd say this is almost as good, but not as good, because I think it has a little more hit, a little more misses than his. Hey. So. <laughs> it's not as good because it's funnier. <laughs> but I think they, I want them to go a little more serious. <laughs> I really wanted it. I wanted them to dig deep into the character study. <laughs> but no, everything. Um, um, I think my favorite part of these movies is those quick jokes that, like, mm-hmm. if you're not listening, like one of my favorite jokes is like, he's like Caucasian. <laughs> he's like six foot three, mustache. He's like this very tall mustache. Oh uh, <laughs> yes, so yes. Makes me laugh so much. So yeah, I'd say this is almost as good, but not as good. Um. Okay. I. So like I really really loved. The first one. Like, I was, like... I don't know if it was, like, the mood I was in when I was watching, but I felt like I was, like, laughing constantly. Like, it was, like, almost all hit for me. So I guess I found this one, like, just a little bit disappointing because I didn't... I didn't find it to be... I thought this one was a lot more miss for me. Like, I thought, like, the opening sequence of the first one is so, like... I think it's so great. Like, it really is, like, a strong opening. And I found... the OJ being knocked No. No. It's the the opening where It's, like, the... No, the opening where they're in the meeting, like the world leaders oh. are meeting, and he like rubs off. Oh the, yeah, that was pretty funny. Like I thought that's such an excellent opening, and I found like the opening to this one to be to hit like a little less, and I. It kind of and I guess, too much on slapstick. And I guess like the same thing. Well, like what you just said about the car, it was like they did. The it was same, recycled. So they did the much. same joke with the models, with the yeah. models, and I was like, it doesn't even really make sense in this scenario, like. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought like this the car like intro. I thought there was like a little more clever stuff. Like I liked this car intro better. I think like with him like with the car being like born. The with, car like, the being matadors, born was, was really, good. Was really funny. I like the bowling one too. So I found like I the but like, 
I guess the way I feel about the opening, like being a little over underwhelming, it kind of it kind of just like set the tone for the rest of it, and it all felt a little. I didn't hate it. Like I still had fun with it. Mm -hmm. Like I still liked it, but it just felt it like fell flat, based on what I thought of the like how highly I think of the original. I guess. See, maybe it's because I had very high expectations going to the first Naked Gun, and then I was a little disappointed by that. So then I had very like middle of the road expectations for this one, and then I was laughing just as much as the first one, and I maybe that's why I'm more positive on this than you are. Yeah, I had like zero ex. I like some of my family members had like always told me, and I had like seen that like OJ boat scene, which is like mm -hmm. hilarious, and so like I went in like with almost zero expectations the first one, and I, like really like kind of blew me away like how like because they really like just jam pack so many jokes in this movie that's what and is like, great about both of these movies and like they they fill it to the brim the percentage jokes. that hit is like it's like and like they're not all like they're a fair share of like really dumb ones but they're like also like honestly some like kind of like clever ones like in there like that you really yeah. have to be paying attention to like notice one of my favorite quotes ever is roger ebert said when you watch a zucker brothers movie you laugh twice, once at the joke and once at yourself for laughing at the joke mm -hmm. in the first place. It's, Which is totally true. It's like such a, it's dumb humor, but it's self-aware in a way where you feel like they know it's dumb and they're kind of basking in it. And yeah. they're, it's like, like if they tried to do uh, this style of movie, but have like wittier, clever, cleverer, snappier humor. I don't think it would work as well. Mm -hmm. It's just like this blunt, like, like watching these movies, but it's like, like a blunt punch. I do think they job. have like witty moments here and there, like oh, actual yeah. smart, like kind of like punchlines that like work. And like, that's, I think it's, they're so great in the way they mix the two. So like, I guess I was just a little more bummed that I didn't love this one as much. Maybe it like might completely be like the type of mood I was in. Like these are very mm -hmm. like, I think you need to be in a specific mood to watch these they're at times. They're good friend movies. Yeah, like, I wish we did watch this one together. Mm -hmm. Like, like I guess if I were to... I just like the first one a lot better. And I went in with expectations. So it's hard, like... But I definitely didn't hate it. Nick, any, any more thoughts on this? <laughs> I don't know. This isn't one we can talk about much. <laughs> no, other than, like, just saying the jokes. Just, I do want to ask you guys honestly, what your favorite bit was. Or if you had a favorite bit at all. And I want to... I wrote down some of the jokes I thought they did a little too much. Or that they... Repeated, and I want to talk about the what? scene where they rip, where Alf blatantly ripped off Naked Gun two and a half. Wait, what? Do you I'm know what I'm referring to? Bring no, I haven't seen the talk scene to anyone where she is singing in the shower, and the man comes in to murder her. And he starts. And singing. she hears her singing in the so shower, and it's so beautiful that he starts that singing is, along. Yeah, I never thought about it, but it it's is Elf. eerily similar to the singing Alf, where Will Ferrell goes in to listen to her sing. And that it's so true. great that he starts harmonizing with her. And it even has... It takes a while for her to notice. <laughs> this one ends a little more brutally. <laughs> it takes a while for her That's to notice. And then it, it, it's... I'm telling you, it's like no, shot for shot saying. the same thing. She opens up the curtain and it's just her head peeking, peeking out. And she looks at him and screams. <laughs> I want to see side by side comparison. It was a surprisingly brutal ending to that one. Oh my god, he just explodes! Yes, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Oh my god. Speaking of favorite scenes, that's probably my favorite scene. Uh, like, there's a joke in there that made the me sex, laugh really the hard. Scene? I have no idea. No, not the sex. With the clay? <laughs> the I thought that was one of the references that was a little more dated. Ghost? The ghost yeah. reference okay. I thought was pretty dated, but then that scene ended up making me laugh really hard. The scene that made me laugh so hard, I don't know why, is when Leslie Nielsen's like on the sink and he just sticks the toothbrush in his mouth. I don't know why that scene made me laugh so hard. Oh, we haven't even talked about how great Leslie knew. Leslie knows he's, 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 so he's a genius. He's so I love good. him so he's much. Such a His delivery is so like he's so, almost deadpan. It's, it's so, so dry. Great. He's so great. He's <laughs> like so fun he to says watch. everything. Like he means it, and it makes. And then so OJ better. being in this, these movies just like adds yeah. like it, it adds a cultural layer that's so <laughs> funny. I wish they utilized it more. I think every, this one. Every I time OJ's in one of these movies, he's like out of it. He gets sent to Detroit in this one. I think that's part of the joke though is because they kind of advertise these movies as like OJ is the star and, like, like and then it. he's never in it he's, he's barely, like, in, barely it. in it and they really amped it up in one of my favorite scenes is the OJ bus scene where he's yeah. being traveling from car to car and he ends up on a bus to Detroit <laughs> and you Somehow. just hear OJ <laughs> screaming no as he travels to Detroit and then that scene comes back and he's like what is he doing in Detroit <laughs> uh, 
one of the things that made me laugh really hard, and it's like one of the stupidest jokes in the whole movie, and it's very early on, is in the credits it says um film d oh yeah i noticed that <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think about that but yeah that is really it, funny. it just made me chuckle really hard i saw that art film it's like it's an art yeah, film yeah um film d it kind of is an art film and uh would you consider the naked gun yes art film? it should I be would. on the criterion channel which i'll be honest this so, and freddy got fingered <laughs> freddy got we need to discuss that when we get an f no trust me we'll discuss it that's uh, a couple then, points right there my last and might be my favorite bit is when is when the in, the imposter stands up from the wheelchair <laughs> and the whole crowd stands up and bring, says it's a miracle, it's a miracle. <laughs> and then a man in the audience he stands up down, and throws scratches throws and he's like I can walk I, I can gonna, walk I was gonna bring that one up also the I just I thought the, the scene where he's trying to wipe the birthmark off that's a real oh, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think there was like some like oddly like political jokes in this. Yeah, like yeah, a lot of like worse. mentioning of the Democratic. The George party. W. Bush character. We didn't even talk about Bush in this. <laughs> the George Bush character is funny. I don't know if it's W. I just said that. Yeah, they do. A, they do a lot of references in this movie, which got a little old. Well, they points. Uh, the ET <laughs> reference I thought worked pretty well. I thought that the was Breakfast funny. Club reference actually made me smile, even though I don't like. I've the never Breakfast seen Club. Breakfast Club. So I, I don't it. like the Breakfast Club, and it wasn't a clever reference at all. But it made me smile for some reason. I thought the Ghost reference was. Age very poor. I don't know. Did anyone the vase scene? Yeah, the I didn't know That's that was good. a reference to anything. Um, uh, and the Twilight Zone reference, the deserve man joke, yeah. made me laugh very mm -hmm. hard. Did anyone realize the joke where like the president character was just reading the card? He's like, "Regression bad, regression good." All right, I got that. <laughs> No, I didn't. Yeah, know. That's that. such if a I watched it again, I'm sure I noticed it more. The yeah, president's just really dumb. That's great about their movies. They yeah, got a great mix of. I'd like to watch some again. Physical comedy, I don't prop humor. Like 50 of Rotten Tomatoes. Physical Dumb. Because critics don't have a sense of humor. Physical comedy, prop humor. It's got like, all kinds of... It's got, a, yeah, it's it's got, got, got a lot of great stuff. I guess I just, I guess I just wanted a little bit less memorable. Yeah, like, I, I, I can like, see that. I'm like that. struggling a little more to think of scenes. Like when I can like really name a lot. Like, like I always go back to that, the scene where they have the, the body outline in the water. In the first one, oh, so which body made me like I laughed like I, like I laughed like embarrassingly hard at that. What about the body <laughs> outline from the explosions where they're like they yeah. the body outlines yeah, yeah. taped around the corners <laughs> of walls? I thought that that scene made me laugh hard when he's like showing him. he's like he gets it from yeah. the recycling bin and shows him and he sets and he sets he has the clock is a little too far forward and he turns it back. I think the sketches really made me laugh. Yeah, it's it's a funny it's like funny. the sketch artist it's like just, I think we need a new sketch artist. Some of the stuff that felt played out to me was they did a lot of like facing crotch stuff. Oh, they, they definitely did that did. joke multiple times mm -hmm. in this movie and it it felt old especially because they did that in the first movie too. I think the first lady getting hit got way used way too much. Never That's really what I'm saying. It. The intro kind of left me yeah. bummed out. Is it do the same thing at the end of the movie? Because the first intro I thought was so. I think that the intro to the first one is so excellent. I like the climax though, where they just trip over the plug at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to hate this movie. It is it's, definitely hard. It's to hate really it. hard to hate it. It's such a. It's very endearing, charming. Are we just gonna go to scores? Because yeah, I, I think all it's just us talking about scenes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to go to scores. Which is all you can really do with yeah. these movies. There's not like a real... Which isn't even a knock on them. It just shows you how funny they are. Mm -hmm. Scores? Uh, I originally gave this a seven. I'm more at like a six and a half to a seven now. I'm at a seven and a half, probably. I'm at a six, I think. All right. Surprise. I went like the opposite from what I expected. Yeah, honestly. Like when I first recommended it, I thought I'd like it the most. Well, I've always been a huge fan. Well, I actually, I know you, I thought like... Yeah, you knew I liked Nick. I just uh, really, like, uh, I, like, shock. You gotta me. watch Top Secret. I'm gonna. Top I need Secret. to watch Top Secret, too. Anyways, on to our final film tonight. This might be a lengthy this is one, the, This is the matinee. This is All the, right. the, uh, main, no pun the main event. <laughs> Nymphomaniac, directed by our favorite, Lars. Oh, yeah, Lars. LVT. <laughs> this man. is about a woman named Jo. She's a nymphomaniac. She ain't no sex addict. She a nymphomaniac. Yeah, she's not a sex addict. Go chapter she's not, by chapter. I'm not going chapter really? by chapter because I don't remember the chapters. <laughs> All right, so this is a star-studded cast with I'm one of the following three scenes and <laughs> other actors. It's a two-part film. Two-part film, but yeah, if you're Carter, if you're Carter, but me and John, we just watched it all the way through, All the way through, baby. Bang it out. Four and hours. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Of course you want. 
First Half, Nymphomaniac, Volume 1, great. Second Half is dog shit, in my opinion. Volume 1, I think, is genuinely great. Volume 2, I think, is complete shit. John, what do you I'm think? I'm close to you. I don't, I don't know if I'd call Volume 1 great. Mm -hmm. I think the last chapter of Volume 1, I really liked a lot. I did, too. I think that was maybe my favorite part of the entire movie the last chapter where they, they took the, the three black and white or oh no they the, took the three the three no i thought that was great too i thought where they took the three parts and then um like the three musical like the bass whatever mm -hmm. and then like combine them i really like the style and editing of that now, i also like the black and white but granted i think i think i want to clarify i think the first volume has a ton of flaws can we go chapter by but chapter i think i kind of want to go chapter by I chapter. i do too because there's a lot Sorry, to unpack Nick. from this there's movie. a lot i have a lot written down there's a lot to unpack from this movie i want to go movie by i want to go over what i think the differences between each movie is too. the first half and the second half of these films me too there's a i'm Complete telling you shift. i don't think he made both it's movies really, at the same time the second half i think is ridiculous ridiculously graphic uh, to the point where it gets well, annoying. This movie is one of the most frustrating movies I've ever watched. The movies themselves, but also because of the news I discovered after I had finished the film. Let's talk about that which, later. What, can we talk about that? Nick, can you go and then can I talk about my anger with that? And well, then can, can we, we talk I about the, the film? News, well, uh, can I just pause it that I think the ending of this movie is one of the worst endings um, to a movie I've is, ever seen. It is it's my least favorite ending to any film I've ever it, watched. I it, laughed. It ruined I was the like, series for me. I, was I didn't like, laugh. I literally ranted to my I was, girlfriend for maybe I was 15 to the point where straight. I was like, maybe like leaning like slightly positive about this. Me too. I was at to a the point where I was like, what in God's name just happened? I, I was shocked. I was adding. A, I was at a positive score for the second one, far below. My, the first You're one. You're giving each but, volume a separate score. Yes, I think they're drastically different. I know, quality. but that that I think that's an that's an issue because it's supposed to be one movie. It's supposed to be a, volume one and volume two. Like like I feel like it's supposed yeah, to be I know, one movie. It, it, okay, that's like a, that's a whole another discussion. That's Honestly, I would into. tell people watch volume one and that's it. But like, no, because like, I did want to see like where her story went. No, I was super excited to watch volume two and that's made it even more disappointing to me and i i am honestly is my least favorite ending of any movie I've i'm ever seen. totally with you i was like literally like jaw dropped so i was like Can, confused as to like what had he i know he needs i know he large venture has like this desperate to need and dark. to be like dark and like whatever but and I was it like, work. it it, it, will, it works, it works if it fits the story, <laughs> not if it's if it destroys what the entire movie like had the, built up I thought, over the course I thought, of the I thought she was gonna kill herself and that would have been like I think that could have been fine. But like what they did was so ridiculously dumb it made Okay, I, Nick, I'm sorry, you can we'll, go we'll, ahead. We'll talk about I wanna go chapter. I really so wanna go chapter later. by chapter. Let's yeah. go with Nick's thoughts um, on the movie. <laughs> I think you guys already know. I fucking hate this movie. I think this might be... This movie's so fucking terribly acted to start with. I disagree. Shia LaBeouf has the worst fake accent I the think I've ever terrible. heard. The Christian Slater's bad. embarrassing with that. Christian Slater's also... Movie. I think Charlotte Gainsbourg... I think, Gainsburg, I think Charlotte Gainsbourg is an excellent she actress. It. I think the actress who played Joe is an excellent actress. Charlotte Gainsbourg is fucking boring. Uh, Uma movie. Thurman. I don't think so. Uma, Uma Thurman's th laughably no, bad. I want to talk that about was a whole way I can't scene. wait to talk about this Uma Thurman scene. is incredible. What? what? Oh okay. my god, I died laughing at that scene. Did you guys watch this movie as a co the first movie as a comedic drama, though? No! no. Because it what doesn't give itself that. About? That movie... The, I interpreted all of the first Nymphomaniac That's as That's because you give Lars von Trier a break. Don't drama. give Lars von Trier a break. That, okay, that movie is funny. Out. If you watch Nymphomaniac as no. a comedic drama, it is a yes, hilarious but I don't think movie. But it's not supposed to be comedic. I laugh so hard at that. Mm. I have so many notes. Doesn't matter. There's an editing okay. scene. Okay. There's an editing choice that's so fucking funny. Not even movie. the editing. <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> Just when too. she's like... Go see the horse bag. Yes. I so that scene is a masterpiece in uncomfortable comedy. Shut the fuck up. It is. Okay. It Let's is. Go, can we go Sorry. chapter by chapter? Let's go chapter by chapter. You admitted you were laughing your ass off. I don't think that's because what Because it was so funny. 
You I don't see how you can not I thought it was that laughably scene and bad. think it was intentionally Because Lars von Trier doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, doesn't matter. Ooh, okay. I'm not getting I might enjoyment. Be on, I might be on the Nick. Okay, well, can we go chapter by chapter? Yeah, we can go chapter by chapter. Can I talk about that controversy? Uh, I feel like that should be an at the end thing. This movie? I feel like that should be at the end. No, because I, th I feel like we're going to digress so okay, far. After fine. I just want to explain. This is going to be such a long one. All right, so... For those of you who don't know, Lars von Trier's movies are pretty extreme, with some pretty crazy, wild graphic things in them. Kind of for no reason. Um, Nymphomaniac <laughs> Part 2 is pretty extreme, um, but apparently there is a extended, incredibly long, and incredibly graphic self-abortion scene that was removed from the second film in, in its entirety. You oh, would really? you, you would recall it. Yes. There I was, thought you were talking about the other and abortion in scene. That scene and she mentions it. No. She mentions it, but I didn't know like they cut cut it out. It, the entire scene is cut out. They have a whole debate about uh gore and uh in the second act. In the second half of the film. And it is completely removed in its entirety from the film. Hmm. And I would just like to say... That's really dumb censoring. Who the fuck is going to watch Nymphomaniac and make it that far in the movie and then be like... Too far. Oh, he crossed the line on this one. Really? The sweet. only people who are going to be watching Nymphomaniac are weird art house people who know that he's made fucked up... Well, maybe because it was released in theaters, like... I think like I'm saying as the streaming service, why would Tubi release the theatrical cuts? I don't. That, it doesn't make any sense to me because who is going to be watching this other than art house people? Because anyone, any average person who watches the movie is Tubi, not going to get it. Because Tubi is going to get more streams from a shorter a movie that doesn't show up as four and a half hours long. No, but the point I'm making is the only people who are going to click on Nymphomaniac in the first place know everything about it. Already. I know. So I don't see but how the censor... What? Putting it up as two volume, two two-hour volumes makes people more likely to watch it. Then two, then a two-hour like and then a two-and-a-half-hour? Yeah, the shorter it is, the more clicks you'll get. I think. Yeah. Also, like, they might be weird about abortion stuff. Yeah, we don't know the company's policies or anything. Or, like... I agree that it's dumb. Like, I would yeah, have liked I, to have seen like, that would have added much more context my, to the my, film. My thoughts were, I was watching a video... Like a video essay on Lars von Trier's films, and one of the first things they mentioned was the incredibly graphic abortion scene from Nymphomaniac. And I paused the video and I was like, I don't remember any graphic abortion scene in Nymphomaniac. And then I looked it up, and it was like Lars von Trier's new movie has 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 extended graphic abortion, and I was like, what? And then I was like, yeah, and then they debate about the morals of, like, showing gore in movies and stuff. And I was like, this is, a, like, a major plot point that, like, affects her character. Like, yeah, that's very odd. genuinely changes her character. And I don't see why they couldn't have cut around the more graphic bits of the thing. They still could They could still have a discussion At on gore. At least mention it. Yeah. It's probably having to do with the fact that it's abortion. Like, it wasn't, it it wasn't yeah. censored. There's an abortion in the film already. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't censored. I know, but like an extended. It, like if you if you didn't watch this movie because it's too extreme or whatever. Like uh, to clarify, it's n or if you watch the censored version, it's not like part of the movie at all. It's completely removed from the film. Any like comments or anything about it, it's never mentioned once in the film. And it really pissed me off when I found that out because it's interesting. It could genuinely change your views on the characters. For sure. Hmm. Anyways, yeah, let's go chapter by chapter. Um, What's the first chapter called? That was, a new, that was a very disappointing thing I learned about the movie after I'd already been frustrated by the, the second half. The most disappointing thing I learned about the movie is I watched it. There are, there are like, there definitely are comedic elements. Like one of the yeah. earliest ones is like... Her whole relationship with Shia LaBeouf? Hilarious to me. I the, thought it was hilarious The whole thing where he's like... Where the guy's like, the old guy's like, 
Three and five? Oh, it's the Fibonacci sequence. Yes. I, yes that was like, funny. When she parks the I car and funny. it does a giant mathematical graph of her parking the car and then it's a shot of Charlie Buff like, oh my I know, god, I didn't she parked the car. I thought there were comedic elements, but like I thought stuff like him like giving math lectures like weren't intended to be humorous. It's large fun to try and say like, and I found it being, this character's an intellectual. No, know? I don't think Ob so. I think obviously I think so. what I took it as is he is the audience and the nymphomaniac is him. That's how I read this movie, right? You could read that that way. Because there are many times where it seems like she is kind of lecturing, like, and many times those are the most annoying scenes because it just seems like a writer getting on a soapbox. It's it's definitely seems here's as if she's means. presenting. No, I if found you complain about Juno, Diablo Cody doing it, here's, no, it's not fair to say. Here's where me and Nick fundamentally disagree about Lars von Trier's movie. I think though. the stuff he had to say in the discussions were interesting. I think what they discuss is interesting. I don't I think, agree with a lot of his politics, I don't think. I don't agree with what he says on a lot of it either. However, I where I disagree with Nick is in is that he says Lars von Trier doesn't realize that anything that he does is funny. And I think he does. And if he doesn't, it makes it funnier. To me. And that's why But I that doesn't it. make it a good movie. God, I'm in the middle. Like I'm in the middle of you guys. Like I'm like having to, like rethink it. If I if I enjoy a movie because it made me laugh, whether that was well, you have to you, admit that it's a flaw. The, the director's intent doesn't matter when you're analyzing a movie. That's bullshit when you're saying that because you could say the room is genius. Okay, did you see all the comedic elements he added? Because the point. The room. Is the room, the room is a very special film that I find incredibly important. Is it a good one though? Is it a good movie though? See, that's the debate. I think the it's I, not the debate. I, I think, think you can make a genuine argument. I think this is a very is a good movie. this is a very interesting debate that could have its own podcast. Yes, it is. To be because, honest, but that's where me and Nick fundamentally disagree on Lars von Trier, and that's why we'll never find a middle ground. Is because I think he is trying to be funny. He thinks he isn't trying to be funny. But Nick says because he isn't trying to be funny, the funny scenes are bad, and I think it doesn't matter. Okay, I laughed, and but I fact, wasn't like I think there's a this weird, is great. I think there's a weird meta narrative where if it Don't isn't even go there. <laughs> no, there there is a meta narrative where if he isn't intending to to do it, everything where he's getting on a soap box and preaching these incredibly serious topics makes it even funnier. But what does that have to do with the film when he doesn't know? What do you mean? Where are you to decide whether he knows what he's doing or not, too? Because, okay, when I'm watching a scene, and it's supposed to be as heartbreaking as this, there's no comedic setup for this scene at all. Uh, heartbreaking is, what are you referring to? I'm talking about the divorce scene. I think I gotta disagree. Divor the divorce uh, I think scene I gotta is not dis supposed to be heartbreaking I think all. I disagree with you that I think there was, I think her playing Yahtzee with the dice, I think that... that was okay, funny. I think that, but I think that there was not even funny until the end, when Irma... Uma Thurman just starts screaming for no reason. That scream was so oh. funny. It was, it was so bad. I <laughs> did not think the Uma Thurman scene was funny from the start when Uma I totally, Thurman I was shows laughing. up with her kids. I was, I was dying laughing. I laughed very hard at that scene, but like, like now just, I feel like I need you, to like rethink if you it. It just seems clip. like one of those scenes where it's like, this is so extreme. And look no, how she's it ruining it. There's nothing extreme about that clip. I'm like reevaluating. That, that scene is pure like, comedy. I, I wrote don't think down, you can say that. I wrote down like, this is ex this is like, this is parody, like this is parody levels of melodrama. Now it's like, like if you saying that he might have intended it that way, like makes me like rethink it. No, I, I... But your argument for that is I don't know. But you don't know either. I don't, but I believe he did. That's like, I think you're allowed to have your own reading. Then. Yeah. You know what I mean? I believe he well, did. Well, then we're just getting into opinions. Of course you're allowed to have your yeah, own opinion. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's why I'm saying we will never find a middle ground on a movie like this or The House that Jack built. I think I fall on the side of it's so bad it's good because I think many other elements of this movie are put forth as very, like, serious. I can't and that's why I call it. I, I, the think, whole, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a pure comedy. I think it's a comedy drama. I know, but like, I think it's, it's like some, situational it's like comedy. It's such like far ends of like intense drama to like. It's very hard to. It's hard to define when one stops, like when the mel when serious melodrama and comedic melodrama stops. I don't think it's that way for *Nymphomaniac*. I did take uh, it out. Like, I think it, there's a clear split between when it stops being one and enjoyable two. 
and when it starts becoming needlessly violent and excessive, and that's between one and two. I agree, that's what And I, I hated two because of that. I liked one a lot better. I completely agree with you. Because one has great scenes of situational, bizarre comedy, a well with scenes that legitimately touched me. The black and white chapter That's the funniest thing. Me. And Christian Slater's performance. Christian Slater's really kind of, really no, kind of his, bad. His performance sucked until like he got in the hospital. To me. What? Him he, on the ground yelling, K, K! I think <laughs> his you? performance was kind of bad. No, I, 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 the, I died <laughs> laughing at I that. I kind of laughed a little bit too. And like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that was extremely melodramatic, but it was intended to be melodramatic, right? Uh, no idea. He put, in, thought it was funny he put it in like black and white. It's like, that's why I'm saying it's, this is a very yeah, hard... Yeah, he put the Uma Thurman thing in a uh, boxed aspect ratio with fi film grain. Film, film I will never forget over. her being like, come, <laughs> come see the horror if bed. Can, if you can <laughs> possibly watch the Uma Thurman scene and think that it's disturbing, if, if you think it's anything other than funny, I don't understand. And then too. I love all the... The second guy comes in and like just hangs out yes. for no reason. Come on, when <laughs> she's berating her and then the second dude comes in and is just with the flowers and she replaces his flowers with the other guy's flowers while he's still there. That's comedy gold. That scene is gold. The kids are when she yeah, how are you gonna defend the terrible kid acting? <laughs> no, the, kids act, the kid acting does suck. I don't Dad, look no. They talk like once though. They they're not like, their faces part of it. though. It's they're, like all it takes is their being, faces. Them being completely still and emotionless made it extra funny to me. But the when scene she's with like, Shiloh, she's like, the kids will have to use public transit now. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> with Shia Buff's acting, I mean Shia Buff's his accent. Is so his bad. accent's so terrible. No, I, I think his say, performance is terrible. Too. Shia Shia Buff's chemistry with uh, uh, Joe. Uh, young Joe, I'm not sure who the actress is who played her, uh, I thought was great. What it, chemistry? What are you talking about? I thought they played off each other all uh, really well. In the one scene they're in? Did you miss an entire chapter of the film where it was all dedicated to her and Shyla? Oh, you're I talking was, about the I associate? Was, it, I it was, the last chapter. I thought it was funny. I thought, I thought it was uncomfortable. You're talking about the last chapter, No, I'm right? talking about when she worked for him. Oh, oh, okay. There's like three I thought separate. It, I thought versions. it was funny. It was. I awkward. never thought it was, it was uncomfortable. Funny. What? It, it really, well, I, I thought, thought it was massively un entertaining. I was like, this is so fucking stupid. I just want this to end. And okay, that's uh, I can we be real? Uh, sh she's a sex offender. She's definitely a sex offender. <laughs> no, she is. This, she's movie a bad should, this movie shouldn't be called Nymphomaniac. It should be called Sex Offender. <laughs> sex Offender. Well, the whole point was that like she did embarrassing. Gross things. I okay. So another thing. annoying thing is we how the how stupid the exposition like of the oh, feminist ideas terrible. at the end are. Like at the end of the movie, I got. I get that this is supposed to be a feminist thing. I get that if she was a man, like you do not have to explain that to me. He's your like, audience. Let me explain the movie to you. Your real audience quick. is smart no, wait, can enough. We stand one? Okay, can we? We gotta go chapter by chapter. I'll go in with We gotta go chapter by chapter. Let's just go chapter by chapter. All right. Because I. Don't care. <laughs> I'll go in with you on two all all, all I want because I hate two just as much as you guys. <laughs> the Born to Be Wild <laughs> when they played. Born oh to my be wild. god! Come on, uh, the intro when they played the heavy rock music. That I like the no, I like the intro. I just thought oh, I thought the intro was good. did it better. Can we say uh wait what funny, did games, it funny games did funny games funny games you can uh, funny it. games did it. funny games is one of the best in openings. I yeah, mean, funny games is a funny thing too. Though. It works for that movie though. It doesn't work for this one. I didn't think. I thought it did. I thought it made me laugh, it made me chuckle. I might. I was just more I'm confused, like, guys. I didn't know. What um, I need to think. Like, a uh, uh, thing we haven't mentioned is I think uh, *Nymphomaniac* one is very well shot. I think. Mm. I yeah, think there's some good shots. Gorgeously shot. I think it looks times. great. I think he's a. I think, I think he's a editing. talented filmmaker. I think the editing is good. I think uh, I the editing some, good. Uh, yeah. I thought some of the editing was. The editing is terrible. I, it's very stylized. I wouldn't say it's distracting. I, I I mean I wouldn't say it's terrible. I just found some of it to be distracting. I thought no, it was it's, it's terrible it's, and distracting. It's kind of cluttered movie. and but it I kind of reminded me could, of a Danny Boyle movie in a lot of ways. Reminded me of the Suspiria remake, a little bit. It, it it reminded me of like a Danny Boyle movie where it's like it's a lot going on. It's very fast paced editing. It's very. 
Like, but there were scenes where like someone would be talking and then it would cut and they're like still talk. Like, yeah, like he a does direct that in all con- of like, his I, movies. I don't know. Like, I think that, in I those other movies be... you can argue it has a point, and this one it just doesn't seem to have one. Like what? I don't think it has Antichrist. A, I don't think it has At a point. At what point does it have an Antichrist? <laughs> you can use the grief point. I don't like that uh, point, but you can use it. Yeah. I've always stood by that's just his style. I yeah, that's I respect style the style. I personally just found it a, t- a tad distracting. I think it, it gets distracting when it's four hours. <laughs> <of> it. <laughs> it works for me. I didn't notice it that much. I, I noticed I, it. I noticed it started, probably like a few times every movie. Okay, uh, let's go back to. I thought his, Let's stick to chapter one. I think that's just his style, and it works for me because it kind of makes it seem a little uneven. It makes it seem like the world isn't like. As it should be. How do you guys feel about like all the fishing references? I fucking hated it. Uh, it reminded me of. I thought those were. I thought those were uh, kind of dumb. It, it, I didn't. Come I like how it disappeared. I was, in the, I, was in the, I was in the middle on them. It reminded me of one of the skin. It reminded me of Vice. This, I don't want to think about Vice ever again. Specifically for one chapter. Yeah, I like. Okay, before we go on to, I like the structure of this movie a lot. I do too. I think it felt like a novel. I thought it was very cool. Well, this is when he kind of became new Lars von Trier. Because House of the Jackbill has done a very, very similar style to Nymphomaniac, specifically Volume 1. Part of the reason I don't like Volume 2 is because he abandons, like, half of the style in the first one. Like, completely abandons it. There's no more snappy editing in the second one. It, then that's we gotta the wait on, one, let's wait on the, the first one. Really, but that's what I'm saying, is the first one really worked for me because I was constantly entertained by how unique of an experience it was. And... The this, this snappy editing, the hilariously uncomfortable, awkward, squirmish scenes that it did, I did like how uncomfortable it was. Like, like the this, repertoire, I think... repertoire between Charlotte Gainsbourg and... Uh, the old guy? Uh, uh, Stelling Skarsgård is great. See, the thing... So, when it comes to their dialogue, I was very, like, 50-50 on it. I found, mm-hmm. like, some of it, the things they were saying, to be, like, really interesting. And then, like, some of it just kind of felt like like mad ramblings like there was one where they started talking about like the word negro and oh it my felt god like, that one, that so one felt like no, really, I, well that's, that one, that's in two that's in two and it felt like really out of place and kind of like weird like i felt yeah, really weird remind, watching that remind me to talk about the pedophile and like, thing in two. the pedophile thing kind of pedophile i was like because it was so hard not to like be like because i read this movie as lars von Trier is a nymphomaniac kind of, like, trying to defend maybe himself and the, the violence it's of... <laughs> and, like, maybe trying to defend, like, his his ideas and his the violence in his movies and, like, him putting himself in that shoe and, like, how he perhaps, like, um, sympathizes with these kinds of people. So I, like, that's how I read it. So it was hard not to be, like, oh, God. See, that's <laughs> interesting because I didn't read it that much. But it's... To me, if that is the case, he does it... Uh, Ten times better in House of the Jack, though. He does the same thing. I'm excited to watch A reflection House. on himself. That's what. That's how I if, if I you, completely read this movie if, as that. If you liked the first Nymphomaniac, if you liked volume Let's one... Let's not talk about House of Jack, though, because we might see that in a later episode. It, no, but I'm, what I'm saying is if you liked volume one, you'll like House of Jack, though. Oh. My life's a living hell. <laughs> Especially if you look at House of Jack, though, as a comedy, as an awkward drama comedy. Hmm. Okay, uh, this is a hard one to talk about. Uh, we go chapter by chapter now. Finally, train, the, we tried to do the, the same whole, thing with Dogville, and we never. The whole train it. sequence, a lot of that, like, kind of reminded me of Under the Skin. Well, let's go chapter by chapter. Do you agree with what I'm saying, though? Do you get that? Comparison? The train sequence, like how they're kind of like how they're like fishing fading. For men. Yeah, it, it, remind, it reminded me a little of Under the Skin, like yeah, kind of things of it. it. I think it, Under it the Skin does it better. It gave me a very nasty feeling, while also giving me that uncomfortable feeling that persists through the first movie yeah like him like her like sucking him off yeah <laughs> i laughed that at that scene was wrong and i that laughed scene... at that also because the like him moaning he's like oh he no. moaned incredibly loud that, that scene so just seemed stupid. Stupid. like so, it, was it was also so very embarrassing like... to me that it made me very uncomfortable and kind of like sad inside for him and for her because it's just it was like very they both kind of hit rock bottom that's right what there. i'm saying but then like his like really like <laughs> over exaggerated moans kind of was like he was yeah, bad at like, acting I, <laughs> oh, he was like please no i, didn't think I don't think the acting, acting was I bad i think blonde, the moan i thought her blonde friend wasn't a very good actor she was i think charlotte gainsbourg is might be the only Hit her and like the I old thought Charlotte Gainsbourg's boring in this movie. Yeah, really? I like her. I like I her. Think Charlotte Gainsbourg. She has the issue of she just has the same face throughout the entire movie. I, I think, think that works. Well. 
I think that works because she's, she's a very empty she's removed herself from society. Okay, but like and when she needs to emote, she does. Apparently. Another thing I liked about this movie is that even though it was four hours long, I did find myself invested in her story throughout. Um, like I, I did was, care um, about where she was going. I'm gonna say I cared for volume one. Volume two, I thought got boring. I didn't. I got. I was bored. I agree that it was. Thing. I think it was boring, but I was still interested in where her character was going. I, I would agree. Uh, volume two. Yes, can we go chapter by chapter? <laughs> so we tried. We tried doing that. We did the same thing with Dogville, where we tried to structure it, and we ended up just throwing everything. I'm just like like a remember, so the ch- chapter one was. I'm kidding. His movies we, are we all up like an, I'll pull Chapter up an one IMDb was her. Chapters. Chapter one was her discovering her sexuality, right? Yes. Uh, it was when she was like a little kid and stuff. And then right? chapter two was when like she started like really acting upon it. Uh. The complete Fibonacci sequence. I, I, <laughs> let me. Um, I laughed really hard at that. Nymphomaniac. I did too, and then the numbers are <laughs> popping up on screen. Three plus one plus two. I did like that, like the stylistic it, aspect. The first movie, it honestly, reminded me of a Danny Boyle movie. It was, it was stylized. Stuff was constantly. Do you know Danny Boyle made like? Yes, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, just making sure none of you were responding to them, to me saying that. I don't know if I. I guess I didn't get that. It just seemed like snappy and like very quick in, and in, very in your face. Yeah, and it was constantly cutting to like it's very, stock it's footage or footage from other films or footage from. I liked it stylistically. I think for I the most too. part, chapter one or volume one. Uh, I believe chapter one was like her discovering. I also like all like the intros of the chapters, like the title cards. I thought they're all cool. He's the king of title cards. All of his title cards are awesome in every movie. I can't remember one in this movie. Really? What are you talking about? I remember the You don't remember one. the Mrs. H title? Like yeah. How pretty that was on the napkin? I really liked all really? of them. Yeah, I awesome. just really I loved the structure. I felt like I was reading a novel. <laughs> yeah. uh, for those that yeah, that's listening at home, he uh, <laughs> just pulled up a picture of Waters Mount Drew with duct tape over his mouth. <laughs> It's like the edgiest thing. <laughs> I'm taking the duct tape off, baby. <laughs> that looks like the Netflix comedy special. Yeah. It's like uncensored. uncensored. <laughs> PC America tries to hold me back. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> that's yeah, why, that's some of his like stuff like felt like, oh, I, I'm going to say it. I'm not going to take it. good people. I'm saying I think it. people should be allowed well, to say the N word. I want to I wanna <laughs> talk about it. I think he just wants to say the N word. I N-word. think we can. <laughs> Have a, Let's just I don't talk. Let's debate. just talk about this. Okay. If we go chapter by chapter, we'll be here for three. We hours. go yeah. for the pedophile scene. We mentioned the pedophile scene. Annoying. Yes. Uh, I think the ideas it brings to the tables are very interesting. Agreed. But I it's think terribly there done. It's a real moral debate to be had. Oh yeah, there definitely However, is. However, I don't understand why that scene happened. Agreed. It's just so Lars she, Andrew could get on so. She box. set up like. She, it comes out of nowhere. She says like. Well, when I do this, I use the, like, truth detectors or, like, lie detectors. Penis. And she <laughs> used the them. Penis. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but what is she trying to figure out? She's, like, she's to, the worst X-Men alive. No, what she's trying to... I got... She was trying... She's a debt collector. So she's yes, trying I know. to... She's using, like, sexual manipulation to try and get them to pay money. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but... but so, even like, then, she gives them a boner and, like, what happens then? What she's trying to do is, like, exploit... They're yeah, like she's inner, trying to get them it's to like like get a boner to do... But she said she started out with like normal stories of like guy on guy what is she guy trying and like to girl do? on girl. And it's like, you know, I get what you're saying. She starts off with like... In, and I also don't see like how that really helps with like... Because then when she finally was like, when I talked about... He was pedophile, he got a boner. Like when I talked about children, I was like... Oh, so she knew he was a pedophile this whole time, and she just didn't no, to embarrass she him. She was but looking, she didn't. She was escal- I think she was escalating. She was yes. She was just trying to find something that would give him a boner, and I'm like. At the end, she's like, get- "Yo, twenty five k, I'm out." And then she gave him a blowjob. Yeah, and then she, she sucked him off. So very I felt bad for him. Very graphic. No, Charlotte Gainsbourg actually no. went down on this guy. I I think what it brought to the table is an interesting debate to have. I wouldn't say I agree with it. I heard a thing that said that it was supposed to be like she sympathizes with pedophiles because she's they're outcasts from society 
because of what they want sexually. But what a that's terrible exactly way to sh- shove it in. She no, no, wants. That's, you read that? That's like exactly what yeah, they say yeah. in the movie. It's no. like word for word what they say in the movie. No, I thought in the movie it's more like we shouldn't blame pedof- like we shouldn't be against pedophiles because they don't act upon their actions. She said that. She also said she relates to them. Oh, okay. Yeah. But again, right, it's so... Way it holds up. Like, I think like the debate... Is it, I think the, it's an interesting I think the, debate, the thing she says about again, like how, I, I don't I think it does come out of nowhere I agree with you it's just like here he is yeah well, I think a lot of the, I think the, a lot of the debates brought to the table are for the most part interesting I think the one about like the n-word or whatever was really dumb yeah this felt but the other one felt like really like and like just having them argue okay can we talk about like let's the talk, graphic let's nature let's talk about chapter 2 let's talk about gra- ridiculous. We, we haven't really explained why we don't like chapter 2 right Chapter volume two, two is volume, volume two, two is <laughs> Jesus. ridiculously graphic for kind of seemingly no reason. It doesn't advance it much. I have no problem with the movie being incredibly graphic. I really don't. I think, but it seemed very it's like. Weird. I think my favorite, like the one, the sequence, I think is like kind of actually well done. The BDSM. Like, no, I just completely disagree. I his thought acting was, is pathetic. I thought it was seeing like last. It, it, it felt like Christian Slater. It felt like I didn't like Christian Slater. Um, it felt like a really, like, Mr. Grant, like, Fifty Shades of Grey. Seemed like it, he was trying so hard to, to be, be like, like, cool. Yeah, and... Uh, it's just two o'clock to seven o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> it was just, it just came out <laughs> like And then him... A yeah, really, no. a really lame... We'll try this again audience. Friday. It just, and, like, it just seems really unnecessarily graphic. Like, everything in the movie it is. started... <laughs> not really, the first no, chapter I isn't. The don't first chapter I found surprisingly... Rest- the first no, volume I found surprisingly restrained. Agreed. Like, it is sexually graphic, but it, it never felt, like, exploitative or, like, needlessly long the or The BDSM excessive. felt like... And in... in uh, I don't know. The BDSM and was I the only even, time I felt like, oh, this is kind of too shocking. In, in volume, it was shocking, but for no it, reason. It didn't really affect you me, know what I mean? honestly. Nothing like, I didn't find after, me in the movie. After <laughs> I felt he like, hit her, like, five times, I was like, okay, it's still, uh, I'm I felt still like, hitting her. I felt like compared. gross watching it. Like, but like not That's in a the good point, though. no, but not in no, a good way. It didn't feel uncomfortable. It didn't or, feel earned at yeah, all. Yeah, I didn't feel uncomfortable in, or squirmish in a way that I enjoyed. Right? I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I in think, volume one, every time I, I felt uncomfortable one. or squirmish or like kind of nasty inside, and, I, it felt okay. earned and it felt. Like, I'm like, not saying that like volume one is perfect by any means. No, I think volume one is also very flawed. I think, but, I think both. I think this is an incredibly, incredibly flawed movie. I just think at least volume one, like had to, some sort of direction and had some sort of ideas. That's another thing is volume two it's the baseline and maybe it's because of censorship. I know, but <laughs> maybe it's because a of lot of movies don't do it. <laughs> That's a sad thing. <laughs> exactly. It's possible because of censorship that like volume two of, volume two feels like it has no direction. But volume two just felt like a bunch of random, like messed up shit. Yeah, like like just thrown at the wall. Well, let's uh, throw a game bang the in there. The thing with the black guys well, I found pretty funny, but it then, just felt like kind of like. Then it was like it felt exploitative. Af- after that, to me. after it felt exploitative. Me too. With, it the, felt no, incredibly. The, ex- the scene with the black guys I thought was pretty funny. There's a pretty hilarious shot of the two black dicks in front of. I know, face, but like it felt exploitative. Heard, like like it felt there. exploitative. Like oh, these black guys—they got really big dicks. Look at them. Let's show them eight times. Like yeah. it felt, oh, And then the, the black and then the guys conversation afterwards, like Wallers. where it seems like Von Trier is like coming through the screen and telling you how yeah. bad PC culture is. I was like, oh, God. It was think, just, it's, just don't say the N-word. It's not that hard. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Lord, and the PDSM sequence really was my least favorite part of the movie because it was so long. They spent so much time on it. And then I, I, then I was just like, why did we see that? Like, you having mentioned the Antichrist reference in this movie. Fuck I was, that I was like, my jaw dropped. I was like, what At is happening? I was, like, I was like, are they going to do it again? Are they really like, about to do this, this again? This closes the Depression Trilogy, which is Antichrist, Melancholia, and Nymphomaniac. And I'm a huge fan of Antichrist and Melancholia. I am and, too. And uh, so is Nick. I need to see Melancholia. Shockingly. But... And so is uh, Shockingly, John. those are actually well-made movies. Uh-oh. And then uh, <laughs> there is a... Direct reference to Antichrist. <laughs> Literally, beat it's by like beat, music. Stick. Except it was done worse. When I, when it I wasn't was done, done worse. When I, it was shot worse. It wasn't done when nearly I, as artistically. When I watched it, I was like, this is kind of like a neat, like it's referencing it. And then I like thought about it for a second. I was like, 
There is no other director who would ever do something <laughs> as obnoxious as what it's this not even. Was it's showing. not even a reference. It's like a it's just, fake. It's a straight. It's a reference that's like a full two minutes long to a movie probably no one else. And then he's like, yeah. and then he's like, oh, not. You, know, you thought I was. You thought I was. You thought I was going to do it, but I didn't so do it. That's that what we call subversion. <laughs> and like, and the, so why did Shia LaBeouf show up at like three in the morning? The, the uh, anti. Like, oh, why is he like, honey, I'm home. The Antichrist yeah. intro is so beautiful and like yeah, it's one of my expertly done in that's any such movie. a great sequence and then this is just like it's just like yeah let's do it again but i don't let's know let's do it again but shittier <laughs> and i was like i like i wouldn't i wasn't like annoyed by it but i was just like kind of like shocked I, yeah i, I, was, I like, was annoyed what? when i first saw it i was like I, shocked, what I, read, I thought about I wrote it, it like, my notes. there's I was no like, other director who would ever have the balls to do that and I think it's like, negative in that I was case. like, oh my, it's one of those meta things I've ever seen. I kind of just wish you'd keep doing that. Throughout also, the can movie. we tell another, like, another degree of That would have been interesting this is another kind of tied together, like, melancholia That's and antichrist thing. This is another just random more thing, but other movies. <laughs> Charlotte Gainsbury's character then. didn't know who Edgar Allan Poe was. Yeah, what the fuck? I thought that was really funny. And then he didn't know who, like, James Bond, the writer of James Bond was, even though he's, like, a... Like well, a, maybe like, it's because he's like he's supposed to be an intellectual, so he doesn't. But he doesn't even know like basic pop culture stuff. Yeah. Okay, but like again, like going back to like their relationship, I did find I do think the idea of like an asexual person and infomaniac like debating issues. I think that's an interesting like basis of a film. Yes, yeah, so I agree. Like, and just throw it out the window. How yeah. do you feel <laughs> about um, the stuff that happened after the BDSM stuff, like uh, her, her relationship with the girl? Really weird. I don't understand what the fuck he's trying to do. I thought it was interesting, and for that chapter I was into it, but within the context of that movie, I was like, why the hell is any of this happening? The movie didn't leave, the movie did not progress to that moment at all. I thought, like, her being a debt collector was, like, interesting. Like, I, I thought it was a, felt I, thought, I, I turned it was like I turned to my girlfriend and I was like I don't know why we're here but like this seems it's like, better than this what is we better been. than what I was doing but like I was like oh this is like movie's gonna get maybe you're gonna get interesting maybe something interesting and then it like kind of just like devolves into like why do they okay why do they use a different actor for Shia LaBeouf's character he looks they, nothing they, they like him just aged. I or thought they, they did a really great job of finding a young Joe who looks like yeah. Charlotte. Skin. Yeah, I would agree, but <laughs> like, Shia LaBeouf oh, looks nothing there's like There's an old Shia LaBeouf who doesn't look remotely like Shia LaBeouf at yeah, all. Yeah, it was really weird. That beating up scene is god-awful. The last... whatever minutes of... I don't even uh, want to talk about the ending of this movie. It's, we talk, there is an absolutely gorgeous scene where she climbs the mountain yes, and she's it's beautiful. Tree. Yeah, but it feels out of nowhere, too. It's like too. one of the most beautiful shots I've ever I've seen. Liked, and I she's like, her. I just climbed a mountain. And then... Oh, she was about to kill herself. And then the, the movie... She's con- <laughs> no, she's contemplating suicide. There's a reason for that. Why a fucking mountain? We've never seen a mountain in this movie before. Could be somewhere alone. And I wish she it was found like the tree that represented... It was a genuine... <laughs> the whole tree stuff was a little annoying. It yeah, was, because they explained that in the end of the movie, too. The ash tree. No, but it was, <laughs> one, the it was one of on the, the few outside. things in the movie with an actual payoff. Though. Agreed. And I, I, I did find it a little bit The payoff was incredibly satisfying and honestly beautiful and touching. However, I don't know that's it's a, followed by the worst back, shit Can we go back I've to volume seen. one first? All right. We're jumping all I see else. why... Okay. <laughs> I know, we're talking... I'm talking <laughs> about the black and white yeah. hospital scene again. I see why... It, it did, I think that mostly didn't work for me because I wish their relationship was developed a little more. No, because everything with him and the little girl was cheesy as hell. It was really bad. Like, and he, him, it was his acting. Him walking in the room when she's like, uh, something clitoris. And he's like, it was him. He's giving her like the, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, I expected like a sign felt like, <laughs> his, <laughs> his acting. Kids was these days. <laughs> I thought once he was a hustler, he wasn't bad. I have to admit. No, I didn't think, I thought he was bad in the hospital. He was I terrible. thought the scenes where she had sex with people in the hospital were like genuinely upsetting. And I, found I connected that with her in that moment. I also of being really, like, wow, sh- she knows like this is wrong and I'm a broken person. It's tearing her apart that she's. I doing really this. also love the last shot. Uh, what's the last Where shot? Where he dies and she's like, it's like between her legs. Oh yes, I, I really love. I really love that. Yes. I thought it was really. Yeah. I, I like like there are like little you, moments. You follow that up with the fantastic montage of the. I that was bass, that's the, probably easily my favorite part of this movie. That was. I thought I that was thought, just annoying. I really? completely disagree. I, I thought like, that was this is so fucking repetitive. I thought I it was excellently care. edited. I yes. loved what it was saying. I thought it was. 
I think like that was and, like that would may have been like like the idea that she has like her own feelings about each individual person was also in, and like she knows their personality types and why they're with her and like what they can do for her. And, I thought that was incredible. And interesting. another interesting aspect of one, I think, is like going through like her process, like her kind of like mental process of like how she like maneuvers all these different men in her life. I thought yes. that was like all really like and then they actually went, interesting. Let's just throw that out. Uh, Fucked up shit. For yeah, the, next, uh, the BDSM. Uh, um, I'm Lars Ventura. Gross stuff. Gross, gross. And, gross. Then, and then let's talk about the ending. Um, which, oh, wait, wait, wait. Can boy. I mention something? I just realized this when we I'm talked sorry, about Nick. it. <laughs> the, the thing. I, you chose this. I know I chose this. You have this. to live with this. Like, can we mention this was Nick's pick? <laughs> I get to shit Nick on it. Nick had already <laughs> seen them. I Maniac. had seen this and he hated knew it. he hated what? it and recommended it to I us. respect him wanting to give it another chance. I, no, he didn't. He just wanted to shit on it. On no, I actually did want to give this movie a second chance. It's been a couple of years since I've seen it. And I would say I've like watched a lot more movies than I would have before. Like I've seen more Lars von Trier, so like maybe I was missing something, but no, I wasn't. To be honest, like I'm interested in watching this again. Like, especially after you bring to the table, like, at least Volume 1 again. Especially That's you bring to the table... I would watch Volume 1 again. You bring right to the now. table the idea of it being a comedy, I'd, I'd like to watch it through that perspective. We watch the Uma Thurman scene as a comedy. We watch every interaction between her and Shia LaBeouf as an awkward situation. No, no, I agree with that. It's... It, I it agree was, with the... I totally agree with the office scenes were comedic. Like, him being... Yeah. Like, him at the... Like her him, bringing in the food, and yes. she's like, bring it back in out yeah. and bring it back in. And like then one of the, the one of the funniest things is when <laughs> we can see him like pressing the stop in the elevator, yes. and then he she says no, and he's like he like presses it again and it like doesn't work, and he gets like fuck. And yeah, it's like that's like and really funny. I thought the scene where she the comically cheesy scene where she picks up the pictures and then it like connects them together to. Oh picture. yeah, <laughs> no. I thought that was funny. And, no, I no. That was I think funny. I think that was interesting because like the because <laughs> what's his face like literally stops and it's like whoa. whoa, whoa. I just see that what a as. Are you gonna say it was a cheap plot device? I was gonna say it's a cheap plot device, and they try to save it with, but that's not how it works because they do that shit in Deadpool too, and I don't fucking no. forgive it there. I thought it was interesting because it kind Deadpool of implies and Nymphomaniac, not as different as you may it, think. I know it's surprising. <laughs> it kind of implies that she's making up a lot. I agree. Which I thought was an interesting idea. They don't do anything with she it. Because she says, I like, would have said, I would have agreed with you if they did anything with no, it. No, because she does say, she's like, because he's like, I'm not sure if I believe this. And she's like, oh, maybe the story is better if you don't. No. And I thought that was interesting. But, but there's... But then there's nothing done with they it. They very well could have discussed it during the abortion scene. Mm. Why not? I'm <laughs> not, I'm, no, I'm not joking. Because I'm not joking either. That would have been pretty good. Because Stellan Skarsgård says to her, like... Why are you being so excessively gory with all of your details? Like, why are you doing this to me? That, it doesn't make it that any came smarter. Off as, I think and that, if that was in that chapter moment, two, it could have added something to the film. That moment right there might have been where it clicked to me. Like, oh, she's Lars von Trier and we're supposed to be... Yeah, we're man. supposed to be against... Yes, and Except it, it just gets way more excessively violent and nothing happens. Also, the abortion scene could have added a whole nother layer to her relationship with the little, with the uh, teenager too, mm -hmm. with her now having this different child figure in her life, and she's supporting her because she feels bad for destroying the baby inside of her. It could have genuinely yeah, changed the film. We haven't seen the scene though, so we can't say anything. So, okay. and then like thinking about like my reading that um where she like she is supposed to be Lars von Trier the ending is even worse if you read it as that way because what is it even then it like completely abandons okay let's do a rant on this the maybe the worst the worst ending ever this, this one this is the worst <laughs> I hate this it's ending. very rare and this is coming off me watching the Suspiria remake which is not a really bad ending I, Th I, that I was just like that was I was like annoyed this I was literally like my draw, my jaw dropped. I mm -hmm. had no clue what I was like. I thought, like, I thought she was gonna kill herself, and then like, I would have like, okay, that's expected. Like, of course, Lars von Trier would do that. Like, I guess that makes somewhat kind of sense. Like, I wouldn't, don't think that would have been a great ending. But like, what I think would have been a great ending if it was if he subverted expectations and like made it a happy ending. No, I think that would have been great. Call it naivety. I. 
I thought it was going to end with him saying goodnight to her and he closes the door and the movie ends. That would have been I, great. And, that would have been a good And end. at that, that point, excellent. I'm not going to lie, I was, <laughs> I was at a six for that movie. I was too. Because it ended on a positive message, which would have sub subverted the whole idea of it being a depressing trilogy yes, too. Yes, I think that would have been it excellent. It would have been... And then like he's a moment like, of actual genius. Ah, uh, no, let's abandon all character development and uh, let him rape her. She, he rapes her. Even Every, though he's... Everything oh, that the movie... God. He's a rapist. All men are bad. <laughs> everything the movie oh. has stood for, the entire film is destroyed in the last minute. Everything I think, that was... Uh, I think it was that's purposeful. I think he meant to do that. <laughs> Everything that <laughs> every <laughs> element of that character was destroyed in the last moment. He was asexual. He literally said multiple times, "Oh, that doesn't appeal to me." No, nope, he's a liar. Uh, no, nope, he, <laughs> he changed his mind. No, I, I guess I he is the audience I, rape. I, I, I said to my girlfriend with our critique. Said, <laughs> right, I'm Lars von Trier, right? And I, I have to have a dark, gross, disturbing ending. What way to do that? That's my thing. Okay, and I was like, "Here's how I would do that." is they're on good terms, right? They just had this, this they finally had a, found a positive out of this and whole thing. And she disappears into the right? or something. But no, he has to keep it dark, right? So then he somewhat stupidly but innocently asks her, can I have sex with you to see what the experience is like? And she gets so offended by this that she leaves. Or she's completely broken that it's he wouldn't even enough. bother to ask him. Not dark It would be like a... I would prefer the happy ending, but it would yeah, be like, like a mildly intelligent way to be like, he still doesn't truly understand this woman and the problems she struggled yes, with. I, I think that's... Well, I just want to wrote that saying? down and said, not and dark enough. <laughs> like, crumpled away. Like, crumpled I, away. Yeah, and it would have fit would, his character I, because it was... He, he's, he's coming from it from an intelligence view. Like, I need to know what this yes. feels like. I need, yeah, like he's but trying to learn it, as much about this woman as possible. Him asking that to her was enough of a misunderstanding that she feels completely betrayed by that. Yeah. They could have done that. A, it would have been a dark, gross ending, but in There's so many ways. Should have had a great, like, there final monologue from Charles. So Charles many Charles ways Gainsbourg. you could have ended this. You could have just had him say goodnight and then comes in the next. I thought he was going to come in the next morning and she was going to be gone. And you know what? That would have been a perfectly fine ending with me. Honestly, it'd be a better ending if she was just gone. He's like, was any of it real? Or no, no. they hold they hold no. on the shot after he closes the door, and I thought I was like, oh, this is gonna, gonna end, end it. Here. That's they're great. Gonna end it here. They're gonna they're gonna end it. Oh, was, great! And, and then, then you see the door open again. I was like, oh, he's gonna walk in, and, and like, she's gonna. I was like, oh, oh he's gonna fuck. walk in, and she's either oh, gonna be fuck. dead or gone. And then somehow, even my worst. Even my worst visions of how this movie could have ended were exceeded. I never could have imagined ever. that this would happen. And I was literally less speech. I like was I like like sat there as the credits rolled, just like literally like <laughs> dead. Like I was like, what in God's name? Why do you think like who let this happen? I, what is he trying like I went on a I would, tangent for I wish I had someone to talk I had no one minutes. to talk to. I, Ranted I about know how I had much to just let it internalize. Like I would love to interview him and know what he was thinking. He wasn't. He just he likes to be fucked up, but which like, is which is his. There's a way he could have been. It's a blessing and a curse to Lars von Trier, because sometimes it feels like he's making good movies in spite of himself. Like Mark Kermode said. He really, Mark Mode is a famous film critic, and when, in his review of Melancholia, he said Lars von Trier made a good movie in spite of himself. And he said this because Lars von Trier does not like Melancholia, because he doesn't think it's an extreme enough movie. Oh my fucking god, I've never heard that before. He's That's hilarious. So, he <laughs> is an enigma. He's, I'm very excited to watch House of Jack. Bill Lars von Trier, I'm very one excited. of my all-time favorite directors. I think he has no idea what he's doing a lot of the time. Sometimes I think he has brilliant... There is brilliance in... Brilliant ideas. I think he's storm. a very talented filmmaker, but... He has vision. One thing like I will say... You have to respect, like... Nick, as much as you hate this, as much as you hate mm -hmm. House of the Jack mm -hmm. Bell, there's not much like it out there at all. Oh, of course not. There's really nothing like I his movies that. anywhere. I would take this over, like, any other... Dumb shit. What the Sonic movie movie. Movie. I'll we, take this over the Sonic we, movie. Hate, <laughs> we all disliked Dogville. There's nothing like Dogville out do you there. Like, Nick, do you like this more or less than Dogville? I was waiting to pop that question. I like too. this less than Dogville. Hmm. That's interesting. 
At least Dogville has the. Are we ready to call hours. on this one? I mean, Am I able to give two separate scores? I don't want to combine them. Honestly, if I, you don't, I don't care anymore. I, I'm gonna. I'm combining them because that's why I've I'm combining them. them. I don't give a shit. I don't see how you could. Because you like you liked the first one. Though. I know, but it's 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 one. Movie I watched it as one. I watched it as one movie. I don't believe he made this is one movie. By the way, he says lies. He lies all the time in his interviews. I'm, okay, so I'm gonna give. I'm one gonna one give one. a score to each, and then mm-hmm. I'll give your combined the final score. combined score. score. All right, that's fair. All right, who's going first? Let's go with Nick because we—he's the most. Actually, technically, he's the one who suggested it. So we're supposed to go first. All right, yeah. John, you go first. I've gone first for like the other ones. So. I think I would give Volume One seven. Mm-hmm. I think seven. I think I would give Volume Two three. And then that actually puts me at my final score, which would be a five. If you were to actually average those out. Me, I was at uh, seven and a half to a light eight for uh, volume one. I thought it was great. And so if I had to review it, I'd give it four stars. Uh, and I was at uh, four, and after talking about it, I'm now at a three as well for volume two. Uh, Overall if, five. If I have to combine them, I would give it a six. Really? Because I think more so than Dogville, you should watch this like, if I had to be, like, if I had to pick between, because even besides Dogville, this is a low, like, volume one of this is still a lower tier Lars von Trier movie for me. Really? Like, besides volume two, I like, I like House of the Jack Built more than volume one. I like, I like Melancholia, Antichrist, Breaking the Waves, Dance in the Dark. Way more than I love dancing. Way more than volume one, even though I really like volume one. So I would say if you had to pick between watching Nymphomaniac and Dogville, I think you'll get more out of Nymphomaniac and it would be a less excruciatingly boring experience. Because I was entertained for all of volume. I was more invested in the story. Yes. So I, I would if I had to combine them, if I was forced to give this one score, I'd give it a six out of ten. Yeah, I I'm I'm at a five, I think. Yeah. Two out of ten. Okay. <laughs> Same score as Dog Dogville. Yeah, I don't know. What did I give? Did I give Dogville five also? You gave it a five as well. Yes, I believe. Yeah, I think that's about right. I wouldn't watch Dogville again, and I would watch Nymphomaniac one again. I want to watch sure. one again, given <clears throat> what you like. Given uh, uh, I would watch one again and then two with the abortion scene for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm very excited to watch House of Jack. After what I've told you about... I was already excited to watch it, but... But yeah, that makes me interested. And you have to go into House of the Jack Bill thinking it's a comedy. That's not fair. I'm not going to go into it thinking anything. I'm going to let the movie dictate... What are you talking about? I didn't go into how said Jack Bill thinks it was like comedy. Me neither. And I that's what I'm it. saying. I'm going to go then in... Then that's your opinion, that's though. What I don't saying. think it's comedy. I'm going to go into it completely like... Look, we're getting into how said Jack Bill again. And we're not even... Listen, all we're saying is that upcoming episode will have to house the Jack Bill. And it's going to be... That's not board. obvious already. An episode between now and episode 300. We'll have House of Jack. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. At some point, we'll watch House of Jack. I'm going to watch... You somehow managed to make it to the end of this. Well, I'm also going to watch Melancholia and Breaking the Waves. Those are the only two. Besides, like, the deep cuts. Yeah, me and Nick uh, agree on... uh, Antichrist and Melancholia. Antichrist and Melancholia. Mm -hmm. And you haven't seen Dancer in the Dark or Breaking the Waves. I really want to, though. Uh, Dance of Dark, Nick, you really gotta watch Dance ben, of Dark. I've, I've been trying to. Speaking ben of endings that... watch The Idiots for a while. Speaking ben, endings that bang. Meaning to watch... Ben, Europa. Uh, Europa. Ben, ben I get to watch go, the Element I get to do this with ours. I'm done. <laughs> uh, Manderley is the only other movie he's made in the style of Dogville. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> it's, about, like I, it's about slavery, so... I really don't want to watch it then. Some heat, there's gonna be some heated stuff in uh, Manderley. Especially with the Negro conversation and... Good. Three <laughs> white... From what did you just say, Nick? Mars <laughs> said I could say it. Three... <laughs> Three white men discuss. We had two. We had like multiple race discussions in this podcast. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, thanks, well, Mars. Carter, open this up with the end. I think we we yeah. spent about uh, 
twenty five minutes on the first two movies, so, and then an probably hour. Like an hour. And I could have, I could have kept going. No, if we went chapter <laughs> by chapter, I could have kept going. Like, like, there's so much to this, talk. I wish we, I kind of like next time we watch, like I don't want to watch it. No, you never want to watch it I again. I want to watch this. Like, I'd want to watch this again. Which, I've seen it fucking twice already. That's two. My, that's two times. Again, too many. Uh, reminder to the audience: Nick picked this. I did pick this. So he has to. <laughs> uh, who whose film had the most interesting conversation? Congrats. Okay, yeah. uh, let's do favorites then. My favorite's Naked Gun 2. <laughs> and that's not even a joke. Carter? Can I pick uh, Nymphomaniac Volume 1? No. No. I can't? It's a congregation. I picked Nymphomaniac Volume 1. You, you can't! can't. <laughs> the audience um, knows. I you, picked Nymphomaniac, all right. which is the two so, films. To all the real fans out there, you know I'm what? actually picking Nymphomaniac Volume 1. No one gives a but shit. If, if you force my hand. I guess I'll pick. Pick Naked Gun two and a half. Take the smell of fear. I also pick Naked Gun two and a there half. There we go. That's the ending I like. <laughs> My movie wins. We got uh, the happy you ending. Know what I actually we should keep. We should be keeping a tally of whose movies get. I don't think I've so won at all. My favorite episode is the one where we all picked our own movie. <laughs> I do like that. Which episode uh, was, was that? That was E. Um, no. I picked Moment of Truth. You picked. No one picked Man from Earth. I picked. We, oh, we picked oh yeah, we man picked from Earth. Earth. Wait, we both picked oh. my movie that day. Oh. Eating, eating raw. I picked eating raw. Yeah, I, I picked, picked, picked Exorcist, picked Exorcist, Exorcist 3. three, and you picked El Norte. Okay. I was very close between that and eating raw, though. To be fair. Follow me at, on Letterbox at Mr. Blister. Follow me, um, John Pietrofeza on Letterbox. And keep an active there. I kind of made like a, like a kind of. Sorry. I made a list that has all the podcast movies in it. Just if you want to like a way to just look at what we've watched. There's no like ratings on it because I don't want to spoil any of our thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I think like eventually once we're far enough, I'll give I'll put like full scores on that. Also, I've also been like keeping track of all the movies I've watched in 2020, doing like a ranking of that. You've been on that movie grind. I've been on a serious like. I've been on a serious movie grind. It's lately. Insanity. I know, like. I'm probably approaching 150. This year, honest. yeah. I've been banging them out. I've been, I've been slacking. But like, I need I to like get. Too. I need to get into other stuff besides that. Like, I want to try and read a book a month. Yeah, so I can catch up with you. I've been living my life. I've been living that. Social We're officially life. at the same number of movies reviewed on Letterboxd. Well, that doesn't mean like he started before. He was. started, like, yeah. Um, and you've watched movies before Letterboxd. That's the, that's the okay. thing. Like, like I still have a bunch of stuff I have to watch. You kind of got into the movie game a little later, so you had to catch up. That's what I'm, I'm, play, that's what I'm saying. Do. I've been playing serious catch up lately, but like I'll probably slow down. I want to read more. I want to live. I've been gaming. I just Being a, a uh, gaming channel coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Nick Stardew Valley World. <laughs> uh, Fantastic Stardew Valley World. Nick, what do you recommend? I mean, Nick, what is... But yeah, so, shout out something. John Pietro Faze, the J-O-N-P-I-E. We're getting so fucking lost. It's also, 1 16 in the morning. Yeah, we still have more to do. We still have one we more to watch. We still have one more uh, cast to put on. Oh, God, yeah, we do. All right, let's end this thing. No, wait, oh, I haven't right. done my yeah, no, I'm not. Yet. I know, I'm just saying, like, let's... You're pissing me off. I've Sorry. been lying all to you this time. I do use Letterbox. Barely. Um, shut the fuck up, okay? You, you gotta s- review everything. I can't review everything. I don't have that time. Don't, like, just put... You, all you have to do is, like, put a short, blurby joke. You have the time to watch a feature-length film, but you don't have the time to, really, like, add three minutes onto that by I'm a busy up man. a letter box review. Yeah, I like just bang Anywho, around. Nick Movie Sometimes reviews, I write... Instagram, Letterbox. Just look me up on Nick Cody, Twitter, whatever. Letterbox is cool. Letterbox I try, is pretty cool. I've tried... I'm a fan of Letterbox. I've been, like, trying to write more, like, I'm getting into it, and, uh, really. yeah, I like it a lot. But, like, sometimes there's just movies where, like, I just can't really, so I just write, like, a short thing. Like, a joke. But, like, sometimes, like, I've written, like, some fairly lengthy stuff. I wrote an article about Sonic, the movie. Can in my school paper. <laughs> Carter hasn't seen it. We'll talk about okay. Sonic some more. Okay. Uh, we have more stuff to do. And yeah. So, good night. Or, good night. Uh, whatever time good it night. is. Enjoy. So, now we're going to watch a movie you don't know.